Hello everyone, yes I know this is a very large box. Welcome to an unboxing of Season 1 of Gotham City Chronicles. Yes I know the Season 2 went up first uh, because it's just the way it arrived. This one got delayed in France. And yeah, the box, um, this is almost crippling this table. It's about twice the size of the Season 2 one. It's exceptionally heavy. I, I honestly can't even twist it to show you. This is the best shot I can actually get of it currently. So we're going to very quickly, and also yes, you can see it did unfortunately get damaged in transit. I hope nothing's damaged. We're going to see as we open it. Um, but yeah, we're going to have a look at all of season one of Gotham City Chronicles, which is a lot of stuff. Starting with getting everything out of this box before the table collapses. Like genuinely, I think this actually puts the table above its maximum load. And hopefully a lot of that is like packing peanuts and what have you. There's approximately 5 billion boxes inside here, as far as I can tell. <laughs> I'm going around both sides of the table, so I apologise because I know it will be sounding weird. We have... Cardboard. That, that's just cardboard. We have... Is this seriously more cardboard? We have more cardboard. I know this is to keep it safe, it actually it creates a buffer in such a way that I think that means nothing, like whatever caught on the, the box has not damaged it, so it's good. But at the same time, there's four loads of this. One on each corner. I can't reach the other one from where I'm standing. You know what's inside this box? A slightly smaller box. So this is like opening up a Batman Matryoshka present. This is the box that was inside the box. And inside this box, is some bubble wrap and then the actual boxes themselves so the core of Gotham City Chronicles and then the Kickstarter stretch goals and expansions that were in the original season one uh, of the game so the base game comes in this box which is poly wrapped as well and that's all the hero stuff but that's only one half of the starter set the other half is the villain stuff, which is in that starter set, which also will not fit in frame, but it is one complete picture. Well, because of the polythene, you can see my hands, hello. So <laughs> that's all the core stuff right there. That's the crux of it, but um, where can I put, I'll put these to one side for a second. There is not enough room for everything else. Also, I don't want to leave everything on the table because I worry for it. We've got something fell. Also poly wrapped. We'll take a better look once I get the polythene off all this. But this this is the Arkham Asylum expansion. Then, oh please don't fall. We have one side. We have the Wayne Manor expansion. You can see the camera on the tripod. That is very shiny. Then. We have, ooh, we have the Batmobile expansion. We're going to look at all these in detail. We have a bonus episode, which is what I thought was in season two, but it must have been a season one thing called an arranged marriage. Extra dice. We'll look at the dice once we're looking at the game. But it's essentially like good dice to bad dice. Different attacks use different colors. Black dice are the best. Red are the second best. Then orange, yellow, white, I think. Then finally, uh, I don't remember what this is. Hang on. This is. I think this is the versus, like the original versus mode stuff. I'm actually not sure. So we'll take a look at that and everything else once I get all this out of the way. So of course we're going to start with the hero box. Everything is ready to be opened. This art on the front is great. Ooh, that is on there tight. There we go. Ooh. That is some nice looking art. I like that. It's actually very thick cardboard as well. It's not just like a cheap printout paper. That's a proper poster. Yeah, I like that. That's good. I'm going to hang on. I need to safely put that aside. So. We have a core rule book, which is actually very thick, available for free on Monolith's website, I believe. In fact, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm like 100% sure. Very in-depth. 
I think the game is a lot simpler than this size of Robook would lead you to believe, largely because the, the biggest thing to get past is just you have to memorize the icons. So the mission booklet is all the scenarios. I believe the first one is called To Sink a City. Yes it is. And there is... How many is that? That's like at least 20 I think. And these tell you how to lay out the missions on the maps, the miniatures you need, the goals of both sides. Uh, I don't think it's num numbered. It must be at least 20. And then at the back as well it shows you these are important references which show you height differences on the game boards because the game boards are 2D and you can't make them 3D. Well, I guess you can make your own, but for instance, like the yellow parts are the raised section of a subway station and then the blue parts are down below. There's also an app or I think it's a flash thing on Monolith's website which does this. So if you have your iPhone or iPad or whatever to one side, you can very quickly check without having to reference the story book, the mission book. So we have two loads of dice in there, which go with the free bonus set as part of the all-in. So more than enough, it's all simple, it's all just number of successes, similar to God Tier. These are your life gems, stamina. You need those for your game boards. These are your equipment cards. Batarangs, armor, flash grenades, smoke grenades, etc, etc. This is a box with all the minis in it. Rather than look through all those cards, because we looked through most of the Season 2 ones, you know what to expect. It tells you who can equip it if it's locked to someone. It tells you their weight limit, tells you what bonuses they give you, like that's an extra re-rollable yellow dice. But what we're here for, and then knock the camera, is the minis. These are the important part. And there's actually more stuff underneath as well. It's very well packaged, this stuff. So I'm being very careful with my hand because it's been pulling in this giant box because obviously the delivery person can't have any contact with you. I uh, managed to break one of my nails quite badly. Let's push this back a little bit. There we go. So it's generic. Look at this over here actually. The box is still so heavy. I would have thought the minis would be the thing weighing it up. So the orange minis are civilians. Hobos and ladies, they all look the same, so we'll just show one of each. Try and get it in view. Detail looks good to me. And then various types of cop. Looks like this one's dual nightsticks. Yeah, dual nightsticks. Standard SWAT assault rifle guy. The model looks good as well. I'd heard that the Season 1 stuff wasn't as crisp as the Season 2 stuff, but I so far I disagree. Uh, looks like they're carrying briefcases full of money, maybe? Or really big explosives. Then there's four, like there's four of each of these. Four Tau drones, almost. These generic drones. Very stereotypical cops with billy clubs and pistols. And a different type of that as well. Two types of cop. So they're for missions where you're playing as the villains, I guess. Oh no, maybe you have to rescue them. So we just take this tray, then underneath are the other minis. Oh, one of them's needing some assembly. So we have Catwoman. And then we have Long Halloween Catwoman. His costume I'm not fond of in Long Halloween, but each their own. This Batgirl? Yes, I think so. There's a lot of capes in here, so it's going to be a little bit hard to identify on painted. This is spoiler, I think. Yeah, that looks right. Don't know too much about her, only recently learned she exists. These are two different bases for the Frank Miller Batman by the looks. I am a fan of and I like this model better than the Night Models Frank Miller. Then we have Bog Standard Batman. This is just the generic Season 1 Batman. Heroically throwing a punch. 
keep forgetting I can come closer to this camera. This, once I remember how this came in, was it like that? No, nope. oh, I'll worry about it in a second. Is Bat Cow, one of Damien's pets. Fear him, for he is the best cow. It's gonna be murder putting these back together <laughs> safely so I can store them as I paint them. That is Huntress, I think. Then this is that woman, maybe? I know it was like the box lid had who it was, but I don't want to close it. Black Canary. Katana, who's also usable in the Suicide Squad expansion for Season 2. Orphan. Uh, Bluebird is her name, I think. I've only recently read comics with her in, her, in it. She's fairly forgetful. This is probably Montoya, because Bullock is next to her. So that's Montoya. Harvey Bullock, don't like this miniature as much as the new Harvey Bullock for 3rd edition Batman, with his donut and his coffee. Jim Gordon. Classic pointing his gun. Ooh, Azrael with Flaming Sword also has villain roles now in second uh, season. This is Year Zero Batman from the Riddler story. Green Arrow, not always on the best of terms. This is year 100 Batman. I am eventually going to read that story, but I haven't yet, so I honestly can't tell you if he's a vampire or just really old. Damien. Less said about him, the bear. A great looking Nightwing miniature, better than the Night Models one. And this will be Tim Drake, probably. Or it could be a Dick Race and Robin, actually. I'm not 100% sure. They're very, very similar looking. Red Hood, complete with minigun, for whatever reason. And then, oh I've forgotten this guy's name. He becomes like a pseudo Robin in Rebirth, but he's at the end of New 52. I can't remember his name offhand. Alright, I'm going to get these back together and then we'll look at the rest of the box. So after that's all out of the way, we have the rest of the hero box, which comes with Three of the control panels, which is what you use to control your characters, and all the character sheets for the characters we're just looking at. Oh, the name I was blanking on was Duke, incidentally. He's not really a, an official Robin, Batman decides to let him do his own thing. So we have a... where can I do it for there's no shine? Kind of like... Uh, no, perfect. So we have Batgirl, Huntress, Nightwing. So the stats, you slot them in like that, and then... Boom, you've got your player card, attack, ranged attack, two different types of like complex action, defense, rerolls, movement. And then in the bottom is active energy, fatigue energy, and wounds. I think that's right. Take everything with a grain of salt until we've actually played some of this. I'm going on memory from watching how to plays back when season one launched. Robin, it is Tim Drake Robin. Commissioner Gordon, Batwoman, Batman. Damien, Sandra Kane, Orphan, Batwoman, Harvey Bullock, he looks so depressed, it was Montoya, Black Canary, Bluebird, they all have the same as what we looked at for season 2, French and English, just a backstory, Long Halloween Catwoman, Red Hood, Katana, Frank Miller Batman, he's so chunky, Year 100 Batman, I guess I could read the blurb to see what it is. It is an alternative future. Okay, he's probably a vampire then. Year 0 Batman, Azrael. Spoiler, Clue Master's daughter, if you aren't aware. Green Arrow, Duke, and Batcow. What is the description of Batcow? I have to know. Okay, yeah, they just they found it and it has like what looks like bat markings, so Damon's like, I want it. And. Bruce isn't a good father, so he was like, sure, steal that cow from the slaughterhouse. It's fine, I break the law when I want to. So the last thing in here, the heaviest thing, honestly, are two game boards, I believe. Or just one? Nope, two game boards. 
I'll move that to one side for a second, we might be able to see them more or less in full. So here, oh, wrong way around, pardon me. I believe you can see most of it. You can't see all of it. Now you can see most of it. So this side of this mat is a bank. The money's at the top end there. And then on the other side of this one is... That would be Ace Chemicals. And then the other one, we've got ourselves, you see here, very thick cardboard, very, very detailed as well. Probably isn't showing up that great on the camera, but these are massively detailed. That looks like a, a back of a factory, maybe. And then on the other side, this is the map you're gonna see a lot of because this is what is used for the first scenario. It's a little dark, so it's a little, not as great compared to the other ones, unfortunately, especially if you're filming, but it's a subway. It's a good example of, it's a 2D map, but you've got to take into consideration the elevation within the level. So you've got like the subway tunnels down here, you've got the, around the top and the outside, you've got the walkways. But yeah, that's the four maps, two double-sided, that come with the base game without any expansions or anything like that. So other than minis, what's in the villain side of the corset. We're going to find out once I clean all this up. Alright, so next we have the villain box. I took longer than you might think to get rid of or clean up all the hero stuff and put it to one side. And these lids are on so tight. The art is great on the box, so I love that. Ah, so for the villain player, this is the main thing you need. Let me just quickly open this up so we can get a better view. Oh, actually it's already open. Perfect. This hunk of plastic is your river. Your villains that are not just hired goons get their health bars there. They get little cubes to spend and they go here and here. But then the, the thinner cards we looked at for season two, they slot in along the river and a villain can activate two of them in his turn and the point cost is above. And then once you play them, you pull them out, put them to the end, shuffle everything down, making the more expensive cards at the start of a scenario cheaper as things go on. And we should have a second one of these as part of the VS mode, I think. More about that once we're actually playing, but this is the core thing for the villain player. Heroes don't get that, outside of VS mode. So we'll get that to one side. And then we have the minis. Lots, oh, lots of hired goons and then lots of super villains. That is in there tight, it just made me, oh, this is a massive box, that's why. There may not be anything else in here. It's stuck so much. It really is stuff. There. There, got it. There is actually stuff below. I'm glad I persisted. Well, we actually we can quickly look at what's below because this is stuff that don't really need to worry about yet. But this is all the cardboard. So these are the things that go in the river I was talking about. These are all the cards for all the miniatures. You slot these in so that the enemy river the plastic thing i just showed you is detailed it's not just going to be the one mono color and then on this side you've got all the health bars tokens fire effects computers these are for your turns hero villain all that stuff that you need to play health bars for bystanders and innocents all the important stuff for once we're actually playing yeah this is that's like twice as thick as the hero mini box Spoilers for who's in it, I guess, if you're taking the time to look at the front there. Ooh. Now, to be, a f to be fair, a lot of them are just hired goons. There's four of each type. I'm only going to look at one of each. These are escaped Arkham guards, I think, because they're holding nightsticks. Sorry, it's escaped Arkham prisoners is what I meant, because they're using nightsticks from the guards. Uh, these are, they're either Court of Owls with guns or I think they might be Red Hood Gang, I'm not sure. I can cheat, hang on. Owls with handguns, assuming they're in the correct place, which they may actually not be. Either way, four of those, four hazmat looking people. Their wide shoulders imply to me that they might be, um, what's his name, Dr. Death's henchmen, and they're turning into trees. These are Bloom's henchmen, so they're getting very spindly and spidery, or plant-like, I guess. They look freaky. 
Riddler's henchmen are super buff for some reason. I guess because he isn't, so he needs them to be. These are generic hired goons, henchmen with pistols. And then there is hired goons with crowbars. Four of them. Four more Riddler guys, also strangely, suspiciously buff. They're melee versions, so they've just got clubs as well. Um, generic prisoners that just use their fists, I think. He's got a number nine on his back, but I think that's because it's a football jersey. Shotgun henchman. Love your Gibraltar-esque hair from Apex Legends. And then these are... They're wearing masks. I don't know if they're meant to be Coral Bells, but they may be Black Masks gang. Because they, they do have masks on. Not sure. And then four of the carnivorous plants for Poison Ivy. Oh, great detail. Oh, really, really good. Let's just put the henchmen to one side, shall we? What is this? Ah, that's who they were. They were penguin goons that are firing net guns. I kind of don't like the net. I wouldn't mind just maybe leaving those off or keeping them detachable. Hmm, okay. So on the right here we've got the big miniatures and we've got the little ones. Let's do the big ones first. The lid came off way too easily. The Man Bat Mini is huge. It's it's large enough to not be classed as a miniature. It's a great sculpt though. A lot of detail. A little rougher feeling than the smaller miniatures. I wonder if that's down to the moulding. Or just because they're trying to give him a texture, I'm, not, I'm honestly not sure. So we have him. We have oh, Gloom, if he can oblige and come out of his base, they're in there tight. I liked Gloom until he was the size of a building and then he was just silly. Prior to that he was nice and sinister in a weird kind of way. He fires out his fingers like spindles and stabs people. So then we have... this is Dr. Death from the precursor to Year Zero. He might be from other stuff, that's the only thing I know him from. Uh, this appears to be the Lizard from Spider-Man. <laughs> Presumably it's meant to be Killer Croc, but that totally looks like the Lizard from Spider-Man. It doesn't help that it looks like he's wearing a lab coat. But yeah, that might be... No, wait, hang on. But that's Killer Croc over there, isn't it? Who is this meant to be? There's two Killer Crocs. There's this... Oh, you know why? Because in the Suicide Squad mission he has a villain and a hero role, technically. But that one does look like the Lizard. Oh, Tusk is caught. That's Tusk. Mostly a Nightwing enemy, from what I'm aware of. Very, very chunky lad. Hard to see because of where the light's catching. I apologise. It is a dank and dreary day. The rain is pouring. So then we have Bane, but this is Big Bane when he's venomed up. I think in this thing here there's a smaller Bane. For when he's not juiced up on Venom. So this is the other Killer Croc. I mean, maybe Killer Croc has two forms as well, I don't know. In, within the context of the game, I mean. And then, this is Solomon Grundy. Solomon Grundy there, looking like the Hulk. Great though. Neat. And if you play the five player expansion, Clayface, also massive, can be used as a hero. Great looking miniature. I love that it's forming into like the hard clay to stomp something. Yeah, that is great looking. That's that's large well, it's taller than Man Bat, but not as wide. So then, well down here we've got like all the gibbles. This is your objective markers and whatnot. So we don't need to look at them. Computers, bombs, the gist. Uh, put this to one side. So there's a few more henchmen in here, so let's just get those out of the way, because the, the villains are the main thing here. Corval guys with dual pistols. Corval guys with katanas. Even though they're not really known for their Japanese style, as far as I'm aware, but whatever. So these are the guys who get the nets, actually, so it wasn't even in the other box. So they're penguin goons, and the nets are below them. So that's all henchmen. Bud and Lou are here. Harlequin's hyenas. Come on, I've got to hold them both in one hand and focus on the other. There we are. Bud and Lou. Put 
putting them back in the wrong places. I knew that would happen. So there is new 52 ivy in Season 2, but this is the ivy that came with Season 1. Uh, okay, might as well go in the opposite direction. So this will be Black Mask. It's very angry. Or he's trying to achieve Super Saiyan, who knows. This is Deathstroke, I think. Using his sword that we've learned is called Deathstroke. Then we have the Joker. Very, very cartoon style there. More comic style, I mean. The Riddler kind of going, hey! Who cares if all my henchmen are really, really buff dudes? Don't question it, answer my riddles. Generic Talon Assassin by the looks. Because Lincoln Marsh is a season two mini. I said Marsh again, didn't I? March. Deadshot. Wait, is that Deadshot? It is Deadshot. Oh, his gun's bent. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, so there's a Deadshot mini in season two as well, then. Or I was wrong about which one of them was. Him, I do not know. But the mini is cool. But yeah, do not know him. He's next to Raish. Oh yeah, so Raish has two minis as well then. I like this Raish better than the Season 2 one. His face is looking a little bit Wolverine. Oh well, hang on, there must just be alternative sculpts to some of them then, because there's another Riddler. And as far as I'm aware, there hasn't been two Riddlers, so... Harley Quinn. My back is going to be so sore by the end of this, leaning over this camera, looking at all these minis. Should have had a seat. Mr. Freeze sands his helmet. So again, I guess some of them just got alternative sculpts in Season 2 then. Uh, oh, that must be Ratcatcher. I'm not used to him looking like that. But the rats are on the base. Another Harlequin, this time with her hammer. Classic Stumpy Penguin, Burgess Meredith style, almost. I think this is Condiment King. It certainly looks like it. I think that's Condiment King. Uh, Firefly. Cool looking mini for Firefly. Firefly is kind of forgettable. Yeah, that's a neat mini, assuming I'm right about who that is. Ooh, there we go. Scarecrow with his scythe. Surprisingly short. But his scythe makes up for it. So yeah, they're slightly smaller Bane, I guess. So the roided out version when he's on Venom is in the larger tree. Oh, Red Hood Joker. Or Red Hood Gang Leader, who may or may not be Joker. Uh, Two-Face, he's flipping his coin. Or looking at his coin. Ooh, hush! Pointing his dual guns. I like that mini. Uh, oh, this is from Hush when he's pretending to be Jason Todd, but it's actually Clayface. Clayface who is pretending to be Hush who is pretending to be Jason Todd. You know, that's not at all confusing. Who's this? Oh, W on his shirt. This is, I think he's called Wraith or Wrath. He's essentially reverse Batman, he's the son of criminals who were killed by crooked cops, so he, t he has a, a hate boner for cops and goes and murders them. And then, uh, an alternative scarecrow sculpt, using his fear gas instead of a scythe, that looks pretty cool. Is there another roll under this? Hang on, just... I don't think there... no, 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 okay, there isn't. So that's everything you get in the core boxes, the hero box we looked at, and all these evil minis. Along with all the, the cardboard that were underneath as well, for about that. So now we're on to the many, many expansions. Pray for my back. So before we do the larger expansions, we're going to do the smaller two, starting with the Batmobile. And then the arranged marriage bonus thing. Let's get this off and see what's inside. A rule book. And the French rule book. For using the Batmobile. 
I'm not actually sure how this isn't incorporated into the... Uh, I guess it just gets to do stuff as if it was a character maybe? Well, either way there is rules, I'm not going to sit and read them. And then a very awesome looking... wouldn't even class it as a miniature, it's more like it is a, a figurine or a toy. Oh, it's got... hang on. Sellotape of course. Why wouldn't it? quite light. It is just like it's hollow plastic. It is cool looking though, it's going to make a nice prompt, uh, prompt? prop for battle reports and such. Yeah, it's neat looking. Then in the bottom of the box is the like the health card for the Batmobile and then the various upgrades you can give it. Again, it'll like, pop out cardboard as well. So as we get in there, there's a little bonus thing. It's just a neat looking car. It's kind of like a cross between ooh, the, the the second of the original Batman movies and then ooh, the first bad one after that. I, I forget which is which. So inside arranged marriage, we have oh we have things. We we certainly have ah so that's where that art is from then. So French, yep. Let's get that to one side. Court of Elves. An arranged mar marriage expansion invites players to take on the roles of villains during a narrative campaign consisting of four missions. Okay. Team composition Bane, Riddler, Penguin, Scarecrow, Joker, Harley Quinn, Two Face. So there's a mission pack where you get to. Well, hang on. Yeah, okay. It must, it must have player boards for villains, and it absolutely does. Scarecrow's player board. The Riddler, the Joker, Two-Face, the Penguin, Harley Quinn, I do not like her mouth in that picture, and Bane. Only one for Bane? No, we know. You flip Bane and he gets enraged. The rest of them just have the usual lore and such. Okay, so that's neat. That's just more content once you run out of campaign missions you want to do three or four in there and then season two obviously comes with a bunch. Apparently season three is going to focus on more like story content I think. I remember hearing that if it indeed happens. All right so now let's look at whatever's in that elongated thin box. Let's see what's in that next. So next on the block I think this is what lets VS mode be po uh, possible but I'm not 100% sure. Season two obviously came with a lot of VS mode related stuff. Yeah okay yeah. It's another command board because the core set, which is at the top of the screen, only comes with one for the villain. That is one for the hero. Oh, there is actually minis though. Huh. So you've got your core rules for versus mode. It turns out versus mode in French and English, exact same. I'm gonna guess this is the French one. Yep. Don't know why I knew that, I just did. So rulebook for versus mode and Oh yeah, and it comes with some base missions as well. So season two has a bunch of versus missions, like even more. So we have, what's in here though? Um, I don't know what's in here. Not very much, judging by the, the, the I like the box though. Really? Really? <laughs> Okay, just throw that to one side. So, oh, those are interesting though because they're not actually not health cubes because they're circular. So they must be used for something else in VS mode. So these are all the cards that make the heroes usable in VS mode because obviously they only come with their normal health bar. So if you want to use Nightwing, uh, James Gordon, etc. Tim Drake, Robin, this gives you the cards that make it possible along with some other relevant push out status effects for the command board, etc. And then the miniatures you get, I think are just more SWAT. They're sellotape, hang on, let's get this open. There we are. So there's drones, we've seen the drones. 
massive chunky SWAT guys with big shields, GCPD. Good detail again, four of them. And then four of... I don't know what these are, they look like um, oh, from that video game. No, I'm blanking on it, the one where you're wearing a super suit and you can change from like power to speed to stealth. Ah, oh, what was that called? Not Prey. Crisis. Crisis. It looks like the, the suit from Crisis. Okay, so that's more minis in the VS mode, and then the, the gist of it is it's a play mode in a box. So now we've got the two leftover things to look at, which are the two big expansions that came for the core game. The Arkham Asylum, Arkham Asylum expansion and the Wayne Manor expansion. Let's do Arkham Asylum first because the box is thinner. So let's see what secrets Arkham Asylum has for us other than some awesome box art of when Joker cut his own face off. He's just hanging around with it. It's a perfectly sane thing to do. That's why he's not in the asylum. Top one in English. Yes. Bottom one in French. Yep. So we've got some more minis, and presumably this is a campaign then. Yep, for Arkham Asylum and Joker's Funhouse. Oh, and a Batmobile mission as well. Okay. So yeah, there's the various rules for here. So this must come with a new map then. A new double-sided map. And some new minis, who we can see here. Crazy Mates, Joker's Gangs, Jervis Titch, Zaz, Professor Pig, Joker, Clayface as the Joker from the White Rabbit story, Tweedle Dee, Tweedle Dum, and Do uh, Hugo, Hugo Strange, sorry, not Doctor Strange. Ah, and there's a map below, yes. Okay. Let's look at the map first. Is it two maps? That's weird. Okay, so there's one big map. Let's see if I can get this folded out. Oh, that's confusing. It's not folded like the other ones are folded. They seem like they're longer to me. Nah, maybe they're the right size. So this is a Joker's Funhouse. It looks like, I think, the, the bit underneath lets you customise what this is laid out like. And then on this side, which again, I'm apologies for not being able to fit in with all the boxes taking up space now, but that appears to be Arkham Asylum. Poison Ivy's cell, Joker's cell, Riddler's cell, I like that. It's a lot of detail. That'd be Mr. Freeze's cell over there. A lot of detail. But what is this other thing? in here. Ah, okay. Well, we've got health bars for the villains, for the villain tracks in the river, so that's expected. But yeah, then there's there's these. It looks like you customised the funhouse map. That's the only thing I can think of, because these are funhouse attractions. They're not for extending the map, because the map looked very barren compared to the other ones. So probably based on the mission or maybe some kind of like, maybe it's a bit of a roguelike mission where you encounter different rooms, I don't know, like Warhammer Quest or something. That'd be awesome if it is. Now can I easily get rid of this because it was, the other maps folded in a certain way, this one does not, there we go. So we can look at the, mich uh, the minis, not the missions. Oh, no protective covering on these ones. Oh, I, I totally missed some cards earlier, but they're just gear. Specific gear for the characters inside. So let's start at the top. That is Clayface pretending to be the Joker, jacked up on whatever the name of the drug was that White Rabbit deals. I can't remember. It's a Venom derivative. Tweedledee and or Tweedledum. And there's the other one here. I like that they're the correct proportional shape to an egg. Hugo Strange has been working out. That is quite chunky. As opposed to Mad, Mad Hatter, who is very, very tiny. He's smaller than Damien. And this is Zaz. Has he got all his cuts? His, yeah, he does. Don't know how well that detail began picked up, but he is covered in his markings. Professor Pig. His cleaver looks a little misshapen to me. But so far all we've had is like a bent rifle on a barrel, so that's a bent rifle on a barrel. A bent barrel on a rifle. This has been going on for quite some time. That is Joker as his sinister Mr. Joe. Or whatever the handyman version of him is called when he starts turning just truly sinister at the end of the new 52 run. Uh, four of these generic henchmen. What are they holding? Hammers. Hammers. 
And then four that look like they've stolen some equipment from Arkham Guards because he's wearing body armor and has a revolver. There's four of them. And then there's just four loonies who are in their straight jackets and running around all happy. It's like the enemies from Arkham Asylum towards the end. They just they don't do anything really. And then when you turn your back, they run at you. So that's everything you get in the Arkham Asylum expansion. I love the I love having more missions, more stuff to play. The amount you're getting is ridiculous. So we're on to Wayne Manor. So here we are. The last thing to look at in the longest unboxing I've ever done. My voice hurts, I need a cup of tea. But it has been wonderful. So many minis to paint, a new game to be excited for and learning to play. Oh, this is on tight. This is also the thickest of the expansion boxes. A uh, little bit of sheet there. Wayne Manor. Wayne Manor. Who would have guessed that that's the same in English and French? That's the French one. Get that out of there. So Wayne Manor is presumably Wayne Manor being attacked. Crime Alley, Back Cave, Elevator. Okay. Assault on Wayne Man Manor. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six more missions. And then seven if you have the Batmobile. So there's two Batmobile missions in total then. And it looks like there's some transitioning rules between maps. Okay, so like the Court of Elves attacking the mansion, that makes sense because of what happened in uh, Night of the Elves. Okay. Not going to stop and read every single mission because we'll see them when we eventually do them down the line in 20 years. So we have some additional player characters for the models in the expansion, presumably. So we have Batwing. Ah, Tim Drake is Red Robin. Oracle in her wheelchair. Julia Pennyworth. Alfred's granddaughter? His granddaughter, right? It must be. Bruce Wayne? Okay. Suspiciously good at fighting, that Bruce Wayne. Ooh, Batman Thrasher suit. So, we got a versus card for him in Season 2, but this is his actual player card. That's his suit of armour. Oh, the model's in here, excellent. That's his suit of armour that he, he murders the Court of Elves with to attack the Batcave. Because he can unleash... He, can, he doesn't need to hold back against the Elves because they're already dead. And Alfred! Alfred gets to do his thing. It's wonderful. There's a T-Rex. I forgot there was a T-Rex. The T-Rex from the Batcave is in this box, that's why the thing is so thick. There's probably cards beneath it again. Oh yeah. We'll do the map first, because again I'm running out of space. Hang on. No player card for the T-Rex though. Moderately disappointed. So this will be Crime Alley. I thought one of the season two maps was Crime Alley, but this is actually called Crime Alley, so obviously I was wrong. Apologies. Hit the camera there, my bad. Another dark map, unfortunately, so it's a bit hard to pick out the detail, especially on the camera. But yeah, this is Crime Alley, presumably. Then Wayne Manor on the other side. Yeah, okay, that's more like it. That's, you can really pick out the detail on that. There's a little outdoor area up the top left here. Suit of armor, it's like a Resident Evil mansion. <laughs> that's really nicely detailed, I like that a lot. But there is actually, oh, the Batcave is a separate map. Yeah, there's another map in here. Let me just relearn how to unfold this. You go like that, and then you go like that, you go like that, you go like that. Easy. Ah, there's also some cards at the bottom as well. So the Batcave might just be like Joker's Funhouse because you've got the Bat Boat there on both sides. And then you've got, that's like the area with the computer, I think. And that's the same on both sides. That's like the medical bay of the back cave. And the armory is over there. I recognize that. And then the main back computer, of course. And it's the same on that. So I guess you just put together the, the bits of the back cave you need. And then in the base of the box, There is actually for versus mode, or maybe you can summon it to help you. There is actually a card for the T-Rex. That looks like an elevator. That goes on one of those maps. Don't know what it's meant to be. Maybe like access to the armory or something. Some more symbols. And presumably relevant villain cards. So now the minis. To end this long journey we've gone on together. Bat robots. You can pay attention to that. So 
we have ourselves, again, additional equipment. We'll see them as and when they're used. Is there sellotape? No. Well, I think that might... Oh my god, it's so heavy! I think that might be larger than... Let's see, what's the largest mini I've had in a miniature game? Something from the Dark Souls board game. A uh, miniature game, rather. But this is prob... Well, it's heavier than Gaping Dragon, but it's not as wide. It might be taller. But yeah, that's... That is a T-Rex. A T-Rex with rules! Just to be clear. So then there's also four bat swarms, which are probably just something Batman can call to this help in the, the cave. Four bat robots, which are kind of neat. Maybe they're training robots actually, he sometimes uses training robots. And then the minis themselves, so that's the Thrasher suit. I'm fond of this mech suit. I'm not usually fond of Batman using a mech suit and he's used a few. But that one I like the, I like the style of. Julia Pennyworth. Or Julie, I forget. Oracle. Almost identical to the Night Models miniature for Oracle, but obviously what can you do with poor Barbara when she's bound to a wheelchair? Alfred, ready to throw fists. What did you say about my tea? Actually, it kind of looks like he's ready to throw fists with Bruce. It shouldn't be that way, but... Come on, get in focus. But it kind of looks like that. It's, that's fun. I wonder if that was on purpose. And then, Red Robin. I, I know nothing of Red Robin. I mean, I know a few stories with Tim Drake, but never with him as Red Robin, other than cameos, more so. So I don't really know about him. He doesn't seem very likeable to me, but, you know. And then Batwing, not to be confused with Batwing, which is the, the thing Batman flies in. That's Batwing. This is Batwing. Yeah, just to make sure we're all clear on that. And I think that is, that is everything. So between Season 1 and Season 2, you're looking at over 200 minis, I think. Um, it's going to take a long time to get stuff painted up for it. I'm going to try my best to get things painted up just for the first scenario. But it's going to be a little while. So don't expect to see this immediately. Other than maybe painting videos, of which there has been one. But yeah, that's a look at Season 1 of Gotham City Chronicles. There's already a video up of Season 2, which had less stuff, but more varied. A lot of minis. <laughs> Thank you for watching this all the way to the end. If you did, let me know in the comments if you did and what you thought and what your favourite mini was. You're not allowed to save a T-Rex. That's cheating. It's too big. Anyway, thank you for watching. See you next time. Ta-ta for now.